Good afternoon and welcome to today's news brief. Today is Wednesday, July 20th. Earlier this week, the first flight from Iberojet flying directly from Madrid landed in Los Cabos with close to 400 passengers. Yesterday, several of those passengers, along with executives from Iberojet, attended a dinner offered by Fiturca and the Secretary of Tourism from Baja California Sur. Several Spanish travel agents were present at the event, and I had the opportunity to interview Rodrigo Esponda, who said this about the relevance of the flight that will be coming to Los Cabos every week, flying directly from Madrid. We are here with Rodrigo Esponda in the celebration of the arrival of the first direct flight from Spain. Iberojet is arriving on a weekly flight. First flight arrived with 94% occupancy and the prospects for future travelers to Los Cabos look really good. Rodrigo, welcome and congratulations. Tell us all about what's happening here. We're very, very happy because this is the first commercial flight that we have non-stop direct from Europe, uh, this case from Spain. We know that this is a very good start that is going to start uh, with the, every week, every Monday in the afternoon and then coming back on Monday evening to directly to Madrid and it's going to be connecting with 11 cities in Europe. So uh, they have a Iverojet that is the airline that is operating has coacher with Air Europa uh, to 11 cities in Europe. So we know that this is going to be fostering many more flights and many more people connecting uh, in Europe. And this is a milestone for us. Uh, we believe that this is the good start of having more non-stop flights from other cities in Europe that we've been working uh, from several years. And we know that the perception of the Europeans towards Los Cabos is going to change dramatically after the word of mouth that is going to be built after having these 4,000 tourists uh, from Europe coming to Los Cabos and discovering why we are the best destination in Mexico and one of the world. Now, something that sets this flight apart from what's happened in the past is this is not a charter. No. This is a proper commercial airline. Can you talk a little bit about the differences between that and a charter? Well, a charter can, on, can, only, be buy, buy, can only be bought if you buy on a package. And then it limits to certain hotels and certain type of traveler. An airline, by contrast, you can buy it uh, connecting in any GDS directly on, on the Internet. And then anyone can come to visit families or just visiting friends or any type of travel. In other news, a few days ago, the COVID-19 test module was removed from the Los Cabos International Airport. This was announced by the airport manager, Francisco Villaseñor, who explained that the module served tourists, the airport community, and residents in general for more than a year. Villaseñor mentioned that the main purpose of this module was to be able to offer rapid tests for travelers prior to returning to their country of origin mainly those from the United States and Canada. Once these countries removed those requirements to re-enter, the module became obsolete and was removed. Francisco Villaseñor explained that the module was used mostly by airport community members and the members of the community in general, while only 3% of airport passengers underwent COVID detection tests there. And in some international news, United States Trade Representative Catherine Tai announced that the United States has requested dispute settlement consultations with Mexico under the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement. The consultations relate to certain measures by Mexico that undermine American companies and U.S.-produced energy in favor of Mexico's state-owned electrical utility, CFE for a acronym in Spanish, and state-owned oil and gas company, Pemex. Ambassador Catherine Tai said they have repeatedly expressed serious concerns about a series of changes in Mexico's energy policies and their consistency with Mexico's commitments under the USMCA. And she added that these policy changes impact U.S. economic interests in multiple sectors and disincentivize investment by clean energy suppliers and by companies that seek to purchase clean, reliable energy. Tai pointed out that they have tried to work constructively with the Mexican government to address these concerns, but unfortunately, U.S. companies continue to face unfair treatment in Mexico. For this reason, the U.S. will seek to work with the Mexican government through these consultations to resolve these concerns to advance North American competitiveness. Following this statement by the U.S. Trade Representative, Alice Hansen, spokeswoman for Canada's International Trade Minister, Mary Ng, 
said in a statement to Reuters that they agree with the United States that these policies are inconsistent with Mexico's USMCA obligations and Canada is joining the United States in taking action by launching their own consultations under USMCA to address these concerns while supporting the U.S. in their challenge. That is all that I have for you today. Have a great evening and remember to tune in on Sunday at 6 p.m. for another edition of Cabo Mill News and Community Update with Corey Riggs and Claudia Bello.